It's a pity that civilization has progressed even into deepest Russia. First aid? Only first aid for alcoholics. One bottle of vodka and nothing else. No bandages, no painkillers. Apart from the vodka, of course. Then I'll get on with my favorite hobby and start destroying things. I definitely won't fell the tree with that. I'll limit myself to the bark. Poor animal is drinking as if there were no tomorrow. If I continue to take such loving care of these animals, I'll never be able to save myself from offers of membership from every conservation organization in the country. Sorry for simply barging in like this, but I'm looking for... Medicine. Parchment. Burnt. What? Which parchment? And what kind of medicine? I don't understand. The old guy seems to be in a kind of semi-conscious state. I'm not at all sure if he can even hear me. Obviously, he needs some kind of medication. I'll take a look around. They all look as if they are about to fall apart. I'll be very careful that... One of the threads has come loose. I don't need any more of them, so I'll leave the tassels where they are. Not really the superlative in whetstones, but these scissors can't get any blunter. And how's that? It now cuts more than butter. Easy there, boy. If I take the spoon, the hairs, and this thread, and I... Hey! It works! If I paint the resin very carefully over the parchment pieces... It worked! Five parts of the source of life. 
two parts of Root of Tears, one part Blood of the Night, three parts Drops of Intoxication, to be taken shortly before it unites with the wind. What effect it is supposed to have isn't noted, just as much as how to get each ingredient. I know. They're under the protection of nature conservation laws. I'll be very careful. man. Wake up. Is this the recipe for your medicine? It really does seem to be the recipe. The old guy wants me to prepare it in this vial. I'll have to hurry preparing his medicine. He's not going to hold out for much longer. Well, that must be the right doses, depending, of course, on the bulb being meant as the root of tears. Ketchup is made of tomatoes. Tomatoes belong to the nightshade family. That could be the connection to the blood of the night reference. I'll try it. A few drops of the intoxication. Five parts from the source of life. Got it. Hopefully this witch's brew doesn't blow up in my face. I have no idea when the stuff is ready, but before it all evaporates, evaporate, that's it. To be taken before it unites with the wind, then the medicine must be finished. Drink, old man. I hope that helps. Thanks. My pleasure. What happened? A little difference of opinion with the guards. Guards? From the research station? Yes, I... No, it's not important. Not so important? You nearly died. But I'm alive. And you aren't just here to help me, are you? You have some questions. Yes. How did you know? Your eyes betray you. The eyes betray everyone. And your eyes, I know your eyes. They were here once a long time ago. Me? I was most certainly not. Yes, they were. But they weren't in the body of a young woman. You're the daughter of... What was his name again? Vladimir Kalenkow? You know my father? Yes, Vladimir was his name. He came to me back then like you are today with the same eyes. I need your help. If you knew my father, then you can also tell me what happened here all those years ago. I'm only a shepherd. I've always been a shepherd, and I will remain a shepherd for the rest of my life. But... I know my place in life, and you should know yours too. Listen to the words of a simple man. My son didn't listen to me. What do you mean? You want to know what happened here almost 50 years ago, and what is happening here today. My son was also curious. He didn't want to listen to me. He found a strange piece of metal in the woods, and he asked questions. The wrong questions to the wrong people. I never saw him again. There are things that we are just not meant for. If we don't realize this... Old man, your words may be very wise, but my father is in danger and I need your help. I know. I can see it in your eyes. 
You really are just like your father. I also warned him, but he didn't want to listen to me either. He entered the cursed realm of the Ogdi. The evil thunderbirds that had been sent to cause endless sickness since the year of the great catastrophe. Your father ignored my warning, and his companion must have paid dearly for it. I know that I cannot stop you, so I will tell you where your father had his camp back then. Follow the northern path until you reach the swamps, and you will find what you are looking for. But always remember my words. Be careful in everything you do. Things happen here that no one can even begin to imagine. The Evanc was right. The atmosphere here is real strange. So unreal. Even if perhaps a good portion of superstition is involved, I have a strange feeling here. And then the story with the Thunderbirds and the endless sickness. Pull yourself together, Nina. You're just exhausted. There are no Thunderbirds and any phenomenon, no matter how mysterious, can be explained rationally. Hopefully... That must be the site that the old man spoke of. My father started his expeditions from here. Maybe I'll find an explanation here of how the events of the past link with the kidnapping of my father. If I remember correctly, then that thing has something to do with magnetism and producing electricity. Hmm, there is still plenty of vodka in there. If I want the one spirit, I think I will have to get rid of the other. Nastarovia! Oops, I think I'm a bit out of practice. <laughs> this has been plundered. Everything that can be taken off and carried is gone. There are only two small nuts here, and I am having them. must be the research station that the transit train was supposed to be going to. Has it even arrived there at all? The research station is certainly impressive. It even has its own runway, and probably just as impressively secured. I can forget getting in there. I'm not even sure that I want to go in anyway. After all, I have heard and read about this station and the place it was built on. Anyway, the station does radiate a certain fascination. Not a positive one. And the longer I look, the more I get the shivers. I better make my way back. There's a lot to do, and I still don't know what secret out of Daddy's past is concealed here. That's what I call quality craftsmanship over 50 years old, and it still works like it did when it came out of the factory. As an obedient little housewife, of course I know what my duties are. There, finished. Shall I make dinner now as well? The rag is soaked through. I'll light the lamp. I can't see or find anything special. I would never have dreamed that one day I would clean out a chimney from the inside. Now that the suit is off, I can see numbers written on it. Seven and a half, three, ten and a half, six. 
I've wrapped the tin foil around the broken glass. I'll hold both nuts close to the coils, but not too close, otherwise I'll be toast. As a result, they seem to have become magnetized. That's strange. Obviously, the compass needle only moves when I press the button. I seem to have triggered a mechanism. But nothing has happened yet. A secret compartment! There are a few old documents and a roll of film in there. I'll have a look at the documents. Maybe my father left them there. Yes, indeed. He describes that the 1958 expedition apparently could not provide an explanation why the plant growth has changed so much here since the catastrophe of 1908. The discovery of a meteorite, hoped for by the government as a cause of the devastating explosion, also did not materialize. For this reason, neither my father in his function as the leader of the expedition, nor the biologist, Ken Morangi, could provide an unambiguous conclusion, which obviously was not regarded favorably by the authorities. Oh, and they are also briefly mentioning Oleg here, but apparently he was not that important. Hmm, I guess I'd better not tell him that. Years later, in his function as a geologist, at the Academy of Sciences in Moscow, my father examined a strange piece of metal that had been found in the Tunguska region. He then was able to prove its non-terrestrial origins, which breathed new life into the meteorite theory. However, upon further analysis, he and his colleague Manuel Perez discovered traces that indicated that the metal had been worked. When they wanted to publish their discovery in the Kalenkov Expert, it was completely, surprisingly rejected, and they were forbidden any further examination of the rock. When my father continued to inquire about the happenings in the Tunguska region, he was dismissed from the Academy of Sciences. The last entries are from 1977. Obviously, he and Manuel Perez went to the Tunguska region on their own. They hoped to find additional fragments of that strange material so they could continue their studies. What the goal was and what happened isn't written down in here. In addition, I have this burning desire to know what is going on with this fragment. On the one hand, it's probably not of terrestrial origin, but on the other hand, it was processed. That would mean the old Evink also said something about his son finding some metal fragment in the woods and then suddenly disappearing. That would fit in with the fact that my father was even thrown out of the Academy of Sciences due to his analysis. I hope that I will find some more answers on that roll of film. Damn, the bulb has burned out. It's not possible to just pop around to the shops and get another around this place. So now is the time to think of something else. Yep, that should work. Since it's rather dark in here, the light reflected by my modified glass shard should do it. So, Manuel, the camera's rolling. Please excuse me for a moment. I'll be right back. Manual! Manual! What was that? Lightning? Or sheet lightning? And what happened to this Manuel Perez? That sounded like an explosion. I should see what's going on. Looks as if half the station exploded.
Come on, come on! Move your asses! The intruders have to be around here somewhere. We'll get them. Spread out. Oh, my head. What was that? Feels like someone sifted through my thoughts. There's someone up there. Get them! Damn. I have to get away from here. That was close. No problem. I told you that I would catch you if you were ever standing on the edge of a precipice. What happened? We just saw that some areas of the research station were in flames, and suddenly there were soldiers everywhere. I don't know much more either. Suddenly, two strange figures appeared in front of me out of nowhere. From the FSB? No, they weren't agents. I'm not really sure. This may sound kind of stupid, but I'm not even sure if they were human. What? I... I don't know how I should describe it. It was more like a feeling that I got from them. What did they want? Did they say anything? They didn't really speak. It was more like... voices inside my head. It was as if they were looking for an answer. What kind of answer? I don't know how to describe the feeling. It was as if my head was going to explode. I've never experienced pain like that. And then suddenly, I knew that I wanted to tell them everything. It was suddenly so clear. You told them everything? No. Before I could say anything, the soldiers came and the two figures disappeared as suddenly as they appeared. Where are we flying to anyway? In the meantime, Sergei has found out that your father was never in Moscow. So it almost looks as if the entire trip was pretty much in vain. No, on the contrary. I'm now sure that my father was kidnapped for some reason that has to do with the Tunguska catastrophe. How come? I found some of my father's old documents. If I haven't misunderstood them, he was on the trail of something big. And I have a name. Manuel Perez. He was with my father back then. And we also know approximately where he is now. Yes, in a mental institution on Cuba. Great lead. It's gotta be worth a try. And there's another name on the list. This Irish biologist, Ken Morangi. That's right. I know that I have already asked a lot from you two. And I'm deeply indebted to you. And I would understand... Stop rambling. What's your plan? You're heading to Cuba and I'm heading to Ireland? You'd really do that? You can pay me back some other time. For example, by buying me a cup of hot coffee. Max, you're a sweetheart. And don't you ever forget it. I'm not usually like that, but what should I do? Besides you two, I don't have anyone who could help me. And if my father... It's okay. We enjoy helping you, honestly. So don't worry about us. Concentrate on your dad. Yeah, okay. We already found the psychiatric hospital. I only hope that this Perez is still here. Why shouldn't he? But first I have to take care of some formalities. Will you be okay without me? Sure. I can manage the 20 yards to the reception desk by myself. Go on. I'll be all right. Okay. See you later. <laughs> 